Hey guys. <sighs> so I left the shop for a little bit. It's about five o'clock. Um, I hadn't had lunch. <laughs> I, I get all focused on what I'm doing. I got a one track mind and there's just no stopping. And so um, on my bigger job where I'm replacing the gaskets on my EGR, um, I'm down to one bolt. Um, honestly, the, the way you do that is it comes out a quarter turn, you go back in and then it comes out a half turn you go back in and then it comes out three quarters of a turn you go back in anyway and so I've done that with three bolts and I'm not gonna lie my 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 forearms my my wrist you know I'm kind of spent so I came into town to get myself a bite to eat I'm also changing hotels um, my other hotel didn't have like a little kitchenette and I, and I just hate eating out so um, I used a, a corporate connection to get myself a better deal on a nicer room and it's gonna have a kitchenette so and it's like literally um, at the end of the parking lot where Walmart is so tonight I'll make a Walmart run or walk and um, I'll get some groceries and get um, I'm gonna make some food tonight guys anyway so for now I came out to get a bite to eat um, this video is actually a side project that came up because in between running those bolts what you do when it just starts feeling too stiff is you you dump more penetrating oil down in the holds um, I'll try and make a complete video of that project and the best thing to do is wait let the penetrating oil do its thing and then you you run them some more and you run them some more and so in the meantime I did this other little project where I serviced my seventh injector or what they call a hydrocarbon dosing valve. And so this is something, if you have an emissions truck with a um, particulate filter, you need to do this service. You should do it every year, um, especially if you idle a lot. And so what ends up happening is you get soot in front of the injector. And so if you've ever seen an injector, um, you know, or picture like the tip on a pressure washer. That's an easy way to describe it. Picture the tip on a pressure washer, and basically what happens is these things get clogged. They get soot in front of them. It's not that the fuel is clogging. The soot just sticks to it on the front, and instead of atomizing the fuel, what ends up happening is it kind of dribbles past all this soot, and instead of this stuff, you know, catching fire and making a flame like it should, and it's basically blowing, it's almost like a blowtorch, um, emptying out or cleaning out your your particulate filter instead of it doing that it's dribbling fuel and It's not getting hot enough to ignite The system knows this because it's got temperature sensors, so it'll shut off your your hydrocarbon hydrocarbon doser or Seventh injector it'll shut it off because it knows the fuels not igniting and it knows potentially it could lead to a fire You'll remember those old Fords um the, the six fours used to do that. They, they would blow fire out the exhaust. Um, and so instead of doing that, they they shut it off and it throws up a code. And then next thing you know, you gotta go to someone that really knows these things well, or um, you go to the dealer. And in some cases, if, if you don't do your regen process frequently enough, um, you can possibly get your soot level to what they call 200%. And when they get that high, a lot of places won't cook them anymore. Um, they don't think they're they're cleanable at that point, and so they make you buy a new one. And I remember on my on my six seven Cummins, um, just the the case, the part itself was over five grand. Lucky for me, Cummins did it under warranty. Um, anyway, and so this is a service you guys should learn to do. Um, I think I goofed up on on the camera angles. I think on one I got it set up like I am now and another one I'm um, the other way all day long. I kind of struggled with that. So bear with it. I apologize um, I probably should have tried to figure out how to get the GoPro going for this um, But it is what it is. I figured this would help um, the bigger project I'm not done with I got one more bolt to go once I get that last bolt out I still got to change the gasket and then put the bolts back on and then reassemble everything and so hopefully tomorrow I can piece together a video of kind of showing how how that process went um, 
these are all necessary items that need to be done and they they save you bigger more expensive repairs <clears throat> but me doing it myself is going to save me quite a bit of money i've also done a bunch of whole a whole bunch of preventative maintenance stuff a um, couple smaller repairs abs sensors um, leaky oil fittings stuff like that and anyways so being able to do your own repairs diagnose your own stuff um, it, it's another part that saves you money in this business I keep telling people how much money you make is only a part of it and when I see guys taking you know those dollar fifty dollar thirty a mile loads if you're brand new the problem is you're not putting enough money away for maintenance and repairs because you're brand new and you don't know how much stuff's gonna cost you in the future and when someone says well you need to put away 10% for that 10% of three bucks a mile yeah not 10% of a dollar 25 a mile if you're doing <clears throat> if you're doing under two bucks a mile you need to increase your your <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> your your budget allowance for your um for your maintenance anyway excuse the flipping back and forth of the camera um i just like i said stepped out to get a bite to eat and i haven't pulled out yet because the train just passed and that was a big old traffic pile up here old carlsbad new mexico man they 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 don't have a whole lot of activity here but when the train comes it's, it's the end of the world because everyone has to stop anyway um i hope the video makes sense um people that are already running trucks are, are going to know what these systems are those of you that are new to them um emissions are just the way of the future um they're they're getting more complex uh luckily it sounds like the newer ones are becoming more reliable engineers are figuring out the 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 mistakes they made in the early ones uh, mine really aren't that bad i don't have too many troubles with the ones that are over the road i used to more doing oil field work because the trucks just never got up to temperature it was a whole lot of idle time you know loading unloading and then we wouldn't really run down the highway fast um you know you're doing 20 miles an hour on these lease roads then maybe you jump on a paved road a hundred miles during the course of the day but you ran 14 hours um anyway um hope you guys enjoy this i hope it's um it's an informative and you don't get too seasick with the camera being up and then down and then sideways and i think in one shot it was even upside down uh hope you guys enjoy all right guys so i walked away from the other project i got the uh, upper bolts loose the lower ones are giving me a little bit more of a fight so i soaked them and instead of losing my patience and breaking them which is the typical thing to do this is what's called a doser valve and like once a year you should pull this off and clean it out um soot gets in front of the injector portion of it um this valve is also referred to as a seventh injector or a hydrocarbon doser is the correct term so what this does when when the truck either does a regen as you're driving or a park regen this actually injects fuel into your exhaust right after the turbo so your exhaust gas temperature is coming out of here um, when you go into a regen your your ECM will will fuel it and change the timing and, and do some things to get your exhaust gas temperature up over 900 degrees and so what will happen is it'll come out so hot this will spray a mist in there and literally it'll start a fire in this pipe that's that's why it's got this crazy insulation on it I don't know if you can tell it's hard for me to tell how I'm aiming the camera camera because I got the Sun right on the screen anyways so it this basically becomes a flamethrower and right past this is your particulate filter and and that's what we try to burn the soot off of the filter anyway so this guy gets all kinds of gunk under it um see if i can get that angle on there uh will that show it maybe see how that looks all black down there and so what what i'm gonna do right now i didn't even have to take any of the lines loose okay it, it was just two bolts and so the coolant lines and the fuel line and the electrical circuit are all left intact. It's just two bolts. But if you look at my bolts, anyway, if you look at the bolts, you can see they're they're pretty corroded, right? That's where they try to stick. But you see how it's wet? 
It's wet because I knew I wanted to do this since yesterday and I doused everything here. Um, the, the base of the shield, the heat shield, um, and the head on the, um, on the fastener itself, I doused everything in uh, penetrating oil. And so when I came in, you know, just a little bit ago when I decided to give up on, not really give up, but take a little break from the other one, um, I figured it was time to jump on this. And so again, light pressure, you hear it crack, you get like a quarter turn out of it, you turn it back in, you work it back out, you turn it back in, you work it back out, slow and easy, and they came out without breaking off. Um, when they break off, again, it's, it's a pain in the butt, because now it's broken off and the valve's still on, you would have to drill everything out um, and hope you can you can do a new, another tap and come in with a different sized fastener um, or replace the elbow. <laughs> so none of which is good. I mean, none of which is, is um, beneficial to, to your service. I mean, if, if that's the case, if you're gonna break a bunch of stuff, then you're better off not doing the service and then take it to the dealer and have them charge you an arm and a leg. But servicing this doser valve, I did 130, 140,000 miles since this time last year. And so that was the last time this truck was in here. And I looked through the records on this truck. We haven't done it on this truck at all. So it's probably got 240, 250,000 miles on that doser valve. I got a new one on the shelf, but if I go to replace it, I'm gonna have to take the coolant lines loose. I'm gonna lose a bunch of coolant. Um, I'm gonna spray the thing off. You can use a variety of different things. Um, I'm gonna spray it off, see if she comes nice and clean. Uh, I'm not getting codes, but I have noticed when I do my regen, my EGTs don't get as hot as they used to. This would be one of the culprits for that. That and a sticking EGR valve will keep you from developing the heat you want. Um, I'm hoping not to mess with the EGR valve on this one just because I already got one opened up over there. I don't want to open up a second one. Um, this is kind of like just a secondary idea, preventative maintenance. Get that done, clean it off, and um, bolt it back together. All right. I don't know how well the camera picked up the last one or how it's going to pick up this one. And I'm struggling to see what I'm actually aimed at here. Let me try it this way. Anyway, you can see she's cleaned up. There's no obstruction in front of it. That will allow it to spray its mist the way it needs to. Oh, sorry guys. I got the camera all disoriented. I'm not really sure. <laughs> If it's upside down at the moment or not, but if you're new to trucks, if you're just going to start this thing, if you don't know anything about them, um, your seventh injector should get cleaned, I'd say minimum of a year. If you do a lot of idling, your seventh injector is going to work a lot because it'll, it'll do that thing where it'll idle up and it won't be exactly like a regen, but it'll sit there and get your exhaust system hot. And the way it does it is through this valve. You want to service this and clean it at least once a year. If you're doing a lot of idling, you really better get to know how to do this process or you're going to be at the dealer a lot. Um, I am fortunate to have the um, diagnostic software. Um, maybe when I get the other one back together, it's probably gonna have some codes in it to clear for the uh, EGR leak. Maybe I'll, I'll kind of videotape what that process is like. Anyway, um, oh, I'm looking at my timer. It looks like I'm upside down. Sorry, guys. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So that's, that's it cleaned up. Even though it looks cruddy on the outside, the important part, the part that sprays and makes the mist um that's that's now clean it's free of obstructions it doesn't have any soot in front of it what you need for this to do is spray in a way that it atomizes or creates a mist and that way it'll ignite um the other way it won't ignite and if your computer senses that the exhaust isn't getting hot 
it knows the fuel isn't igniting and instead of it letting instead of it letting the system start a fire or an explosion it'll turn off the fuel it'll throw up a code see dealer soon um and it's it's not going to keep your 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 diesel exhaust or your particulate exhaust filter it's not going to stay clean it's going to develop soot you're gonna have performance issues, you're gonna have check engine lights, frequent requests for regen, and it's it's gonna mean you're gonna to have to go back to the dealership. Now, if you run heavy and hard and you keep your exhaust hot, um, you could survive with your, with your doser valve having an issue, um, but it'll start throwing up check engine lights pretty frequently. Anyways, um, that's pretty much it for this little project. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. So this is kind of next level stuff. I don't expect anyone to go out and, and spend, you know, I think the software is like 2,200 bucks. This is a product called Premium Tech Tool. Um, it's put out by Volvo. Volvo owns Mac. The engine in this truck is a Mac. Um, I licensed it through Mac. Um, nonetheless, this is the truck that I just did the doser valve service on. Um, I need to address an issue first. This is my comm link. And so the green light on the laptop means it's connecting to the laptop. The green battery looking symbol means I have um, a connection going to the batteries. Wow, I can speak. Um, the voltage in the batteries are adequate to run system checks. So, the next two items are in the red. I need to address that first. That's gonna kind of interrupt the video a little bit. It may just be a matter of it's running a test that it hasn't completed. Um, I may just need to clear an error or something like that. But it, this, this type of operation does take a little bit of learning. Um, so I need to figure out that first. Anyway, if you look at my dash, um, the lightning bolt means I have an open circuit. The P is just my parking brake set. The, the little exhaust looking thing with fluid coming over it is basically telling me if you look at the gauge right below it, I'm really low on, on DEF. I pulled in here almost empty and I did a regen. Um, anytime the trucks come to the shop, I try to do a regen just because it's, it's healthier for the truck to leave with zero soot. Um, close the door, see if that helps a little bit. Anyway, as you can see, I'm also low on windshield washer fluid. These are all things I'm trying to address before I leave. Don't, don't mind the windshield. We've, we've had rain and whatnot. And the truck's just been sitting parked. And so the ATC is active traction control. That relates back to the ABS light, guys. Um, I had an ABS light earlier and I yesterday adjusted it inward, brought it closer to the, to the reluctor wheel and the code went away, it came back again, and so I don't know the specs on it. I can't just run an ohm test on it. Um, I did swap one. I swapped it with the one on the opposite side, and now the code moved to the opposite side. So deductive reasoning tells me it's that one sensor. Um, and so I can go back and um, all I need to do is buy another one is what I'm trying to say. The, the problem followed the sensor. And so with these Mac trucks, you can actually use this message center. There it's telling me DEF is low. If you don't get the program like I've got, you can actually go into diagnostics and it'll show you your active faults. There, there aren't 128, that's just the code. And so these are my active faults. That, that's, that's referring back to the issues I'm having. Um, the, little, uh, the lightning bolt is telling me there's a dead short, and that dead short is basically an open circuit. That's what these two faults are. Anyway, so I'm gonna address those later, but the reason we're here right now is I just replaced the doser valve while I serviced it, I cleaned it. About a month and a half ago, it gave me a code that its efficiency was low. Um, and I did notice that when I would run a park regen, my exhaust gas temperatures were not getting as high as they should. And so I'm hoping with what I just did, that will do it. 
And so what we're gonna do now is put the truck into a, um, we're gonna force it into a regen. Um, these systems don't usually allow you to do it on your own. Um, if you push the button on the dash, if it's not asking for it, you know, you can push it till you're blue in the face and it's not gonna do anything because the truck's not asking for it. And it's not gonna ask for it because our, um, our soot level is low. Um, I brought it down pretty low yesterday with the, um, what am I trying to say? With the regen I did yesterday. Um, but since I got tied up on the other job and I remembered I hadn't serviced this, um, this doser valve. Oh, what did I just do? I had not serviced... I'm having a hard time following myself here. I guess now that, that I've watched other YouTubers do stuff and I try to record myself doing stuff, um, I, I get what they're going through. <laughs> um, it's, it's tough to aim the camera and do stuff one-handedly and watch what you're doing. So anyways, this is my screen where we... Um, where we can analyze what the truck is doing. And so I just I just started the program and you can see my, my soot ratio is only 6%. That's indicative of I just ran a, um, I just ran a, a, a regen cycle. Um, but this kind of shows you the different parameters. You have, you know, your exhaust gas temperature. In the 300s is very normal for it being idling. Um, you know, it shows you the different parameters. Uh, right now, my my doser valve is actually active. That means it's there's there's a few different codes or different statuses. There's active, there's passive, there's purging. Just depending on what the system's doing. And so, what I'm going to do is is fire up a. Um, I'm going to put it into regen mode and just make sure the uh, the temperatures get up higher than they were before. Um, it's kind of a waste of fuel. But since I took the doser valve off and I cleaned it, it'd be really good to know that it made a difference and uh, it'll ask me for less regens out in the field. And so you activate it and then it's gonna ask you to make sure some parameters are correct. You know, the truck has to be in park, transmission in neutral, yada, yada, yada. This one is not an automatic, so it cannot tell I'm in neutral. The only sensor it has for which gear is reverse. And so I have to manually check that. Once I do, um, you can you can hear it. The, the truck just started revving up. You can see the RPMs are climbing. And she'll start making some heat here in a little bit, guys. If we look at the, uh, the gauges here, you can already see the, um, the exhaust gas temperature is climbing. That's what that chart indicates. And so in a minute, our exhaust gas temperatures should be, you know, between 900 and 1,000. And your, um, your post, that's your post turbine temperature. And then your pre particulate temperature, it'll get up into the 12 to 1500s. And so she's, she's working it. Um, we'll also notice a climb in coolant temperature. The coolant temperature will climb um, well over 200 degrees. Your engine oil temperature will get up into the 130s. And essentially what this system does is, you know, if you look at it here now, it's it's basically convinced the system that it needs a parked regen. But instead of you pushing the button, the system activates it. And there you can see the, the temperatures are climbing. Um, this is big boy stuff, guys. I mean, I bought this because I had 16 identical trucks with identical VIN numbers, um, well, sequential VIN numbers. And so this type of purchase makes sense. Um, the laptop unit aside, the, the software is like 2,500 bucks. But the upside is these tests, these procedures, um, it's recording it, okay? Uh, let's see if I can get that to focus. So see right there where it says play one, pause one, stop one. Um, it's recording this. And so if I have a problem and I can't get it figured out, 
I can send this work order, including this run, and, and they can analyze these figures and compare it. Let's see if I can move it. Um, so now, you know, the, the, the things we know, you know, you see my exhaust gas temperature is climbing. That needs to hit about 600 to 650. And then you'll notice, you'll notice a change in the injector tones. Um, that's when you'll, you'll know it's, it's doing its thing. Um, the after treatment system is pressured up. You see there it's up to 60, um, 67 PSI. Um, after treatment shut off, valve status is in the green. Discharge valve status is in the green. Um, our current mode is active re regeneration and now we're in fueling. I don't know if you guys picked up that sound, but the truck just changed tone. Um, that's basically, it just activated that seventh injector that I just serviced. And so now we should really start to see um, the, the temperatures climb here. You can see the um, DPF intake temperature is now up to 625. That's probably gonna double. Let me see if I can scroll it back down to the chart. So you can see there when, right when it, when the lower number hit 600, you see how the one in the middle, the blue suddenly jumped up? That's, that's actually what you're looking for. All of these figures are gonna, are gonna climb. I don't really need to let it run long. Um, I just want to see if my, what's it called? My uh, particulate filter temperature climbs up more than it was last time. I also wanna get out and double check, make sure I'm not leaking out of that doser valve because I just removed it and resealed it. So right now when I end the, uh, the video, I'm gonna walk out there and just make sure that elbow isn't getting wet with fuel. If it is, then I didn't get a proper seal and I need to, I need to stop, let it cool down and make another attempt at sealing it. But they're pretty straightforward. It seemed to sit down nice and flat, but I just kind of wanted to share this a little bit. Um, you know, as I post my videos, sometimes I wonder if you guys think I'm, I'm full of it and am I really out here, you know, working on stuff and, and, you know, do I really do what I say I do? Um, this is, this is part of it guys. And as someone posted, you know, on yesterday's video, you really do need to know multiple facets of this. Um, everything you don't know how to do, you gotta pay someone. And so you can be weak in an area or two, um, but you can't be new and green in all of them, in my opinion. Um, you can see already my soot ratios dropped to five. It usually doesn't go to zero. It usually only drops to around two. And that's based on the on what they call the pressure differential sensor or the 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 delta pressure sensor is what they call it differential delta and so depending on how well that's calibrated it probably won't show you two i'm sorry it probably won't show you zero in my particular case i know they've hit they've never hit zero is what i'm trying to say anyway so yeah if you look at me i'm out here in coveralls and you know i'm not faking it guys i'm i'm getting dirty <laughs> it's fun though to me this is this is truck this is this is the business i enjoy it's what i do you know it's it's not as much fun now that i kind of gave up the shop area to someone else you know i really couldn't afford the rent so i'm i'm out working in the dirt in the the wind and hell yesterday we even got a little bit of rain it would have been so much nicer to be inside, close the door and just keep working. But um, it is what it is. And there you can see my temperatures, you know, still climbing. Um, the intake temperatures at 700, like I say, that'll, it'll probably take another 15 minutes before it gets into its right range. That's why these things take so long. And if you ever get a truck with one of these systems, and it asks you for a regen, keep in mind, if you think I don't have enough time to get it done, but I'm gonna start it, and then when I move the truck again, I'll start it again, that's a waste of time, guys. 
because this isn't actually doing anything yet. Um, the very top number needs to be closer to like 900 degrees. The number in the middle wants to be 11 to 1200 degrees. And so all this time it's been running, burning fuel and everything else, it, it hasn't really started doing anything yet. It doesn't really start cooking until like 15, 20 minutes into the cycle. So if your idea is it takes my truck 45 minutes to do one of these cycles, I'll do 30 minutes here and then 30 minutes again, you're, you're wasting your time and your fuel. Don't even bother, wait till you have the time, let it run start to finish, and um, that's, that's your best bang for your buck with fuel. Um, as you can see, the climbing process and temperature takes a little longer as it gets warmer. My coolant, if I can learn how to aim this thing, my coolant's at 189, that's probably gonna see 205. But, you know, she's, she's dosing right now, she's dosing fuel. Anyways, so it is guys, thanks for watching. Just for reference, this is what a brand new one looks like. See the little orifice that's kind of inset? That's to keep it out of the way of the exhaust. The problem is soot builds up and fills up that little cavity. That's what I wasn't really able to show in the video, unfortunately. Um, there was a lot of soot that came out of that as I sprayed it down. And when I was done, it didn't look new like this, but everything was clean.